Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortese. Well, it was a shortened week of discussion on Barnstable this morning due to the Memorial Day holiday, but the subject of the first big weekend of the summer season certainly gave us plenty to talk about with our guests this week. We started off the week on Tuesday, June 1st, with Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce CEO Wendy Northcross, who gave us her impressions of how the region fared over Memorial Day weekend. From all signs, I think it was very, very good. If anything, it might have been a little too nice for the weather and maybe kept people from shopping. But even at that, I hear that Main Street Hyannis was jam-packed and full of people, and um, that's good news. I, I think the weather was just phenomenal and we know it drove a lot of people here at the last minute uh yeah no question i mean at least on saturday anyway the uh, the beaches were uh, jammed especially on uh, barnstable south side where i was uh Covels and craigville and all those places were filled with people so uh that's that's a good sign i mean well it's a good sign to the extent that people are here i'm not sure how many of those people were actually going and shopping because it really was such a nice weekend um, well, yeah and some of the restaurants you know we have uh I saw some friends last night, and they were talking about being at a particular hot dog stand, and um, they said, well, how was the weekend? And they said, you know what? We never looked up once all weekend. So there was <laughs> just a line at the front window, and, and they were humming, and that's great because, you know, our small little businesses really depend on this time of the year to kind of rake in the hay and, and, and just make the money that gets tied them through the winter. Yeah, overall, Wendy, d does this weekend, uh, any of the anecdotes that you've heard, uh, does it give you any kind of a sense as to what we might be in for this summer in general, supposing that the weather doesn't take a turn for the worst? Yeah, you know, weather is a big part of this, and we talked about that last week, yeah. because when you have such a high identity as a beach destination, which we are with over 550 miles of coastline, weather can be a determining factor whether or not people want to come here. It's like the ski resort. If it's not... Knowing in Boston, people think they can't go skiing in right, Vermont. Right. But with, um, th I think this is the best Memorial Day weather I've seen in a long, long time. So that gave us a, an extra push. There were places that were definitely sold out this uh, past weekend that might not normally have been if the weather wasn't so good. But they're telling us to our resorts, especially, are telling us that advanced bookings are good, and and that's what we need is that combination of a good block of business supplemented by that last-minute decision-maker who said, oh, man, the weather forecast is great. Let's go to the beach. Our Memorial Day weekend recap continued into June 2nd when we asked a number of our guests on Business Wednesday for their thoughts on the weekend's tourist activity. Among them was Barnstable Municipal Airport Manager Bud Brialt, who reported some mixed results. Uh, I've, been, I've talked to two of our air carriers in both of them are indicating about somewhere between 5 and 10 percent over last year That's increase. Great. That's great. Uh, which is very encouraging. Um, if you look at overall from like one of the airlines, it, if, they, if you look at all their multiple routes, then they're up 9 percent. Uh, some are up, some are down. Uh, so I would say the same thing would be true for the other airline as well. Um, we looked at our, our jet fuel sales. Our jet fuel sales are down, believe it or not, from last year wow. at this time. Uh, and even the, I, would, I talked to the tower and asked about the number of airport operations by comparison to last year, and airport operations are down about 18% uh, from last year for that particular weekend. Now, uh, can, can you resolve the seeming contradiction between the fact that some of your air carriers are up with their operations year over year, and yet your jet fuel sales and things like that are down? Um, we think that some of the general aviation may be down. Some of it could be a combination of things that people are just not fueling here. They may be fueling elsewhere at a lower price, perhaps, uh, or they're just not flying yet. We just haven't maybe perhaps reached the peak for the general aviation thing. Okay. I think that some of the general aviation may have been affected by uh, the, the uh, instrument weather. Uh, probably not so much jet traffic, but more the uh, the smaller aircraft. So I don't know. There's just a sort of a it's a kind of a weird set of circumstances when you you find out that the airlines are up, and but uh, operations and, and jet fuel sales are down. So. Yeah. I would say it's sort of a mixed bag, but we think that we perhaps have turned a corner and hopefully things have leveled off. On Thursday, June 3rd, our attention turned to the town council and the ongoing discussions concerning the fiscal year 2011 town budget. Each year, the Comprehensive Financial Advisory Committee provides to the council an analysis of the budget and offers some suggestions for the council to consider going forward. Here, Finance Director Mark Milne gives us his thoughts on one of the more interesting CFAC suggestions. 
Uh, the CFAC says that uh, from FY06 until FY10, the uh, town's tax levy increased by 14%, and over the same period of time, the fire district's tax levies increased uh, collectively by 23%. Uh, the CFAC is suggesting that the administration and the council consider filing legislation that would ensure the rate of growth in the tax levies for the fire district be no greater than the rate of growth for the town of Barnstable. So essentially, a prop two and a half for fire districts. Uh, clearly, CFAC is still in favor of finding a way to consolidate the fire districts. Clearly, that isn't happening anytime soon. But I, I think this point is well taken. Uh, I, I feel like this is kind of a fair recommendation to make. Do you? I, uh, you know, I interpret, I interpret your, uh, your, your interpretation. I, I agree with as far as it sounds like they're recommending that they, they be brought in, in under a prop two and a half cap. From their standpoint, I think they're coming. I will. I, I, I try not to speak for the committee. And of course, they'll be there tonight. Of course, they could, they could, they could uh, elaborate on this. But I believe with their, you know, the, the, the approach that they take is that we all pay. We're all pay, the same taxpayers are paying into these two entities, the fire districts and the town. It's all coming from the same people. So why aren't they why aren't they um, limited to the same uh, taxing le tax levy increases that the towns are are limited to? Instead of consolidation consolidating the fire districts, maybe the next best thing would be to to try to get them get the legislature to restrict the amount of uh, increase in the levy from year to year. Uh, in essence, making them subject to say a prop two and a half. Barnstable Village resident Lee Hill is a financial advisor by day, and by night he's one of the more civically involved residents in the village. He's also the founder of a kazoo marching band that's making its debut at the Barnstable Village 4th of July parade. I'm serious. Have a listen. Now, uh, as I mentioned, you're a financial advisor. You seem to be very involved in the village. Uh, you have perfectly coiffed hair and very, very white teeth. You look, ah. you look like a pretty <laughs> normal guy, Lee. <laughs> And then there's the kazoo band. So tell us the story of how you hatched this idea. All right. Well, what had happened, again, back to our little committee, uh, Jen Mullen is running the 4th of July committee, and uh, there's a subcommittee of Peggy Bernard and uh, Karen McMahon and I. We're sitting trying to deal with the dilemma of, in this economy, uh, how do we make sure that we can continue the 37th parade is, is, to be as, as good as the, those in the past? Because everything in the parades, by the way, are free for, for the participants. And so we had a budget, and Peggy, Peggy put a very detailed budget together, and, and part of that budget was having some musical instrumentation. And we were looking at uh, pipe bands, the, you know, the Irish bands. We were looking at getting the various high school bands. And it turned out that also in this economy, a lot of, a lot of the uh, groups that had provided their services free now are requiring some substantial uh, funding to be in the parade. And it just sort of it came to me and said, look, let's have a kazoo band. <laughs> and, and they all stared at me. Why the kazoo? I mean, it sounds like that was like the first thing that came to your head, like it was as na natural as anything else that you would say. Somewhere in my mind, having lived for a while in Rochester, New York, uh, I, I recall a article in the paper that, where the, they, a group of people got together and set the world, the Guinness Book of World Records for kazoo, simultaneous kazoo playing. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, and I think that when I was talking to you yesterday about this, that y you had thought that maybe maybe a world record situation might be possible on the Fourth of July, but you've since rethought that, right? Well, given that there's 9,500 people simultaneously playing the kazoo. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But look, I have that's that you know this is this is not a short term project. I'm looking at this eventually uh, to get to the point where I mean that's a long term goal. We're in the short term we're going to march in the Fourth of July parade in Barnstable Village. If you'd like to see these complete interviews, every episode of Barnstable this morning is available to watch on demand at the town's website. You can check them out at town.barnstable.ma.us. Well, that's all for now. I'm Nick Cortese. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.